All right, we're back. It is 1012 on April 28th. And we're going to go through, uh, we're picking up on S120 where we left off. And now that we have Ledge Council with us, we are going to go through the language uh, and see what changes have been made or the improvements that have been made. Great. I will. Um, Nelly, can you let me share my screen? I will put up the language. Thank you. All right. Jennifer Carby, Legislative Council. This is uh, S120, and we're looking now at draft 3.1, which I believe is posted, and specifically at the PBM and 340B language. So I've done a markup showing um, the changes from the earlier versions that we looked at. This is still adding some language in Title 18 and an existing section on pharmacy benefit managers, PBMs, and their required practices with respect to pharmacies. In this new subsection D, it would say that a pharmacy benefit manager shall not, and then we took out this sort of broader language and stuck with the narrow, two narrower provisions. So shall not require a claim for a drug to include a modifier to indicate that the drug is a 340B drug unless the claim is for payment directly or indirectly by Medicaid or restrict access to a pharmacy network or adjust reimbursement rates based on a pharmacy's participation in a 340B contract pharmacy arrangement. It would prospectively repeal that on January 1st, 2023, which keeps it in effect through the end of 2022 and at midnight. As it turns to 2023, that's when the repeal would occur. Um, so obviously you can change this date. I think the way the, the language had been provided to you was that it would take effect immediately and would expire on this date unless, or on December 31st, 2022, unless it was extended. Um, so this does the same thing because the legislature retains that ability to modify or extend the date, but it sets it up to happen. And then it has DFR and the Office of Attorney General. So on or before January 15th, 2022, DFR in consultation with the Office of the Attorney General would report to this committee, uh, House Health Care and to the Finance Committee uh, regarding national activity affecting participation in the 340B drug pricing program including recent changes to the manner in which prescription drug manufacturers pay rebates to pharmacy benefit managers for prescriptions filed through 340B pharmacies, the potential impacts of these changes on Vermont stakeholders, including individual Vermonters, and possible state responses to prescription drug manufacturer and pharmacy benefit manager actions related to participation in the 340B drug pricing program. And then finally, in the effective date section, I struck out the language saying that the PBM 340B provision would take effect July 1st, and instead just says it takes effect on passage. So everything would take effect on passage. Okay, thank you. And we do, we do have this on our webpage and the changes do begin on page seven. So we're all right. set. We probably can take that down. Unless uh, committee questions on the language for Jen. Okay. That's there. You go. That's good. All right. Um, committee discussion. Jen, really, thank you so much for uh, working with folks on this um, and it, it really does offer clarity it is extremely helpful uh, and we know uh, we uh, what we said before you got here was that these these types of things come up at the last minute frequently and fortunately we were able to make some changes that accommodate uh, the request hasn't been easy it never is um, but I think it, it, it does, it is important going forward. So thank you for being with us on this one. It's good. Okay. Any other questions, discussion committee? 
Any other questions overall on S120 discussion? I have one item. Uh, it was written, brought to my attention by Diva. Uh, the, and Diva was asking if the primary care study, could the, the one that asks how much will it cost to, what are the costs associated with um, two primary care visits for everyone without co-pays? Um, the suggestion was to put that into the benchmark study with DFR. Unfortunately, the bill had already been through the budget process and uh, was taken out of the bill that we have before us. And then I heard from the Green Mountain Care Board that it might cost some money to do the study that we have in there. So that's, that's, that's hanging out there. My suggestion to uh, Diva was to please uh, take this to this suggestion uh, to the House uh, and perhaps to the um, Appropriations Committee as they negotiate the budget. So it, uh, it's not something that we can deal with right now. It's unfortunate. That one came too late for us to consider, but a, probably a good suggestion. So at least in my mind. Um, so that one, I'm just letting you know that that's out there and Senator Hooker, you're, you're on the hook for that one in some way because you're reporting the bill, but go ahead. Yeah, right. So it's still included in this bill. No, the, the primary, which the, the primary care, primary care yeah. is in the bill. Absolutely. It's in the bill. Right. It is in the bill. The request from Diva was to uh, include the primary up. care analysis in the benchmark plan. Mm -hmm. That's Senator Cummings. Uh, yesterday we had some talk about the administrative cost study and what it was going to include, like the cost of complying with our or taking part in our. Uh, yeah, healthcare reform. Healthcare reform, the bill back from oh, right. Green Mountain Care. Yep. Uh, just to make sure that it's not a yep, it's gone up 20%, but it's gone up 20% because have we covered that? There are no changes. I have, I have not made any changes to uh, the report requirement. So right now it still says just an analysis of the increase in administrative expenses with the increases in the CPI. It doesn't, it doesn't and, break anything now, out. I think analysis might imply the type of information, but are you, would you like to see? I think it might be helpful to say, in, including, but not limited to um, cost of, participation or with, you know, uh, uh, health healthcare health. reform efforts, okay. um, costs that have been shifted from the general fund. I, we've, we've done so that. Would it be uh, helpful, Senator Cummings, to have um, in, in this information that gets provided, I mean, right now the language is having uh, the Green Mountain Care Board provide an analysis just of those increases. Do you want them to um, break out sort of which ones <clears throat> or what the increases are, both including and then excluding the um, the bill back, the premium processing? Yeah, I mean, and I think the when people hear, yeah, administrative costs. The first assumption is, oh, everybody got a raise. Yes. <laughs> um, are a lot of raises. And I think we need to make clear that there are other factors involved in the increase in that cost. Now, how we do that, I don't know. We could look to some- I, I mean, I think you can, I think we can, can have the the board present the in, information you know i think we can put language in that directs them to um to maybe to break out the different either the different 
categories, you know, or, or exclude these types of um, expenses, you know, so they could give you an overall ad administrative costs and then administrative costs excluding okay. these categories or the increase. I don't know in if we know all categories. of them, but broken out by category, cost drivers by category. That's good. How's that? I think that works. So, so just to say, um, the board shall um, shall. I'm just trying to think of how to say it. Um, the analysis shall include or will uh, have explained yeah. something. Yeah. Else. I don't know how to shell um, categories of expenses related to increases over time, something like that. I think Senator Cummings' language about cost drivers is is appropriate, and they should know what that means. Um, that that's a term that's used for what what is making the administrative costs increase. And yep, oh, that works. Nolan, okay, so up. Nolan is here. Yeah, you could instead of being specific, you could say including causes, drivers, and other. Well, I just added specific. a second sentence that says the analysis shall break out the administrative cost drivers by category. That does that does that get at what yeah. you're yeah. looking for? Yeah, okay. That's great. Done. Good, 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 good reminder, Senator Cummings. Thank you. Do you want to show it to us, Jen, briefly after you get it? Sure. Okay. Yes, I was just updating the yeah. uh, no. draft number. No. Okay. So, yes, let me put it up. What does that make it? 3.2? 3.2, because I'm going to have to take out the, the highlighting and stuff anyway. Yeah. Um, so, this is the new sentence here. Oops. So, we have... Um, they just the it, analysis shall break up. Do you want to take out the word the before administrative cost drivers and just have it be administrative cost drivers by category? The always implies that there's kind of a definitive number, and I'm, I don't know whether that's possible. Could go into inf, into micro categories. And we'll we'll add in maybe we'll add insurers, yeah, in here so it's clear they don't have to compare the cost drivers in the CPI. Yes. Okay. I wonder if it should say so break out administrative costs and cost drivers because you have your costs which are fixed and I think of cost drivers as things that are constantly pressures. How's that? How's that? How's that work with our financial wizards? Is that good? Senator Where's... Cummings, does that work for you? Where is she? Yes. <laughs> it's so hard when we can't see each other. Ruth, you're all good with that? I would just say the analysis shall break out insurers' administrative cost drivers by category. Okay, so Nolan- That's, you, that's but, what I had. Yeah, yeah that's oh. what you had. So then Nolan suggested to put in administrative costs because there are some fixed costs. I think it's just redundant, but I, you know, I, I, right. I don't have strong okay. feelings about it. So, you know, either way is fine with me. <laughs> Let, let's, let's leave the Department of Redundancy in for now. And okay. Then, you know, still has a ways to go. Okay. Should I, should we also in the, in the area of redundancy, Senator Hardy will love this, but uh, um, shall the analysis shall identify and break out. 
Again, just I think it's. I think that's redundant. <laughs> that's why that's I said you. Really I thought redundant. You'd love it. That well, was. You know, that well, was you know, really redundant. Jen. Jen gets paid by the word. I'm just trying to help her. Oh no, I don't. <laughs> Jen and Dickens. We go for conciseness. I think honestly, I do think that the folks filling it out will know exactly what we're looking for. And I think you're. I think you're right. We don't need to. Right, be... and this might be a. a yep. Yeah. Okay, this is good. Are we good with that then? Anybody on the committee not good with it? All right. Let's. Uh, so, Jen, does that make it then 3.2? Yes. And I also will. Let's, let me stop sharing. Yeah. Um, good. And I will take out the highlighting and the, you know, clean up the PBM stuff. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Anything else? All right. Now I would accept a motion on draft 3.2 of S120. Senator Hooker. I move that we accept draft 3.2 of S120 pending cleanup. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the cleanup has been completed. The no, cleanup no. is completed. Wasn't much. Uh, can you send that to Nelly so it's on our webpage? That'd be good. And that'll be yep. the final the final draft for uh, the reporter. Um, so are you suggesting that you'd like to pass this to the full Senate? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, committee discussion, questions? Senator Terenzini. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Senator Lyons. I'll uh, call the roll for S120 draft 3.2. Uh, starting with myself, I'm a yes. Senator Hooker. Yes. Senator Cummings. Yes. Senator Hardy. Yes. Senator Lyons. Yes. I have a vote of five to zero, zero. Perfect. And Senator Hooker, you are the reporter. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And this bill, so in, in discussions, uh, various discussions, discussion number one, the bill will go to rules. And then I understand that there is some interest on the part of uh, rules, we're hoping, to move the bill out favorably to the full Senate. So that, you, Senator Hooker, you may be invited into rules. I'm um, on that committee. It, it, huh? I'm you're on that on committee. It? Yeah, okay, good. All right, and so it's either you or me, but you're perfectly capable. So the um, then the other issue on this bill is that in talking with my Senate uh, peer, about the bill to the, in the committee of jurisdiction in the in the house rather, um, there was huge concern expressed about the lateness of the bill. So um, we're continuing a dialogue, and I understand that there will be a dialogue going on uh, in the other places as well. So just to let you know, this is a. This will be a heavy lift for House members. You know, imagine our getting a bill right now that, but it's not like they haven't known about it because I've been in conversation with Representative Lippert now for a long time about the bill. So that's it for that one. Good work. Thank you. Thank you, Nolan. Thank you, Jen. Um, committee. Uh, thank you, folks who are still with us, uh, Helen and um, and Devin. Thank you for your work on that section. Greatly appreciate it. It's good. Okay. Anything else, committee? Because I think we're really. Uh, I don't have anything else on the agenda for us today. As I said, keep your eyes open for Friday. We may have an update from uh, CDD. Uh, DCF on um, residential 
children's residential care facilities. So thanks, Jen. Um, okay, so we're good. Excellent. Now you have some time to uh, get ready for the floor. I know that there are a lot of bills of ours coming up.